And what have you learned about yourself from being a performer and a writer? Mm. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, that stamina is everything. Stamina, you can fake talent. <laughs> but stamina is everything. You can't get tired. And but what's really interesting, it's a test, because you know, I'm 83, and it's very interesting to compare how I function now with how I functioned in shows in the past. And I think a lot, I don't know, a lot of it is you must go to the gym a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to, I mean, you have to exercise a lot. You've got to be strong. It isn't just spiritual. Right. You know, a lot of it is you have to be physically strong to do it. Yeah, oh, advice you've ever received. I was thinking, it's funny, uh, when I worked in advertising, I had seen a cartoon and I got it and I framed it and I put it on the wall for my cat, for my staff. And it's these people slobbing a little, little, having all this trouble. And above it, this person is walking naked, floating above them. And it says, the trick is not caring. And I thought, you know, a lot of times you're at your, you can't, people don't like you, but so what? You know, so what? You know, your, you have to know your own abilities. If you're in there and you're doing your best job and you're doing a good job and they don't get it and they don't care and it isn't working, who cares? You know, the fact that they're unhappy with you should not matter. Mm-hmm. It's all about your own opinion of yourself. I mean, you know, you know that you're capable, you know you're talented, you know you're doing a good job. And, you know, you have to rise above a lot of things in this world, a lot. Mm-hmm. And if you're wandering around and your, your concept of yourself is how people are responding to you, you're going to be unhappy a lot. What's your favorite place to spend your day off in New York City? Oh, listen, I think, oh, God, the, well, you know, the galleries, the museums and galleries, because there's a, I'm going to do, I've got like three days, you know, before next, the week after next. Uh, I mean, there's a whole thing of, uh, you know, Alexander the Great went all the way to India. Did you know that? I did. Alexander the Great was in the third century B.C., and he invaded all of the world. It was the greatest expansion of culture. And behind him, they left all of these sculptors. So in the Asian world, there are whole a great deal of sculpture that is really like Greek sculpture because they were they were Greeks left behind. And there are three different exhibits right now in New York where they have elements of that. And that interests me so much. And there about and there's a couple exhibits at the at the Metropolitan Museum I want to see. I've got five or six galleries and places I have to go, definitely. Because that's something that you're not going to get in another city. You know, we have a, we have a relatively cultural world, and I always <laughs> I always say, I mean, you can be cultivated, but you have to work at it. <laughs> and here you can just go experience. And here it's right; it's a very easy. You know, it's so much. I mean, you read the Sunday Times, you think, "Oh my God, I can't even do all this mm-hmm. stuff." You can live in New York your whole life and never. And there's so much to do. Yeah. What's your favorite part of the creative process in writing, and where's your favorite place to write? Okay, well, my favorite part of the creative process of writing is when I get done. Because <laughs> somebody said to me, how do you know when you've finished a novel? I said, when I got 250 pages, <laughs> it's done. <laughs> I don't care, you could finish the loop yourself, you know. But it's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, 250 pages is, and I, my new, I have a new novel in June mm-hmm. called The Beauty of Men Never Dies from Wisconsin University Press. And I think it's only 180, you know, because, it's because what I really wanted to say, I did in 180 pages. But um, I don't know, I'm very workmanlike. When I'm writing, I do five pages a day. I go at 12 o'clock and I work till 2.30 and I do a page every half hour and I have five pages a day. So I have 25 pages a week. So I can do 100 pages in a month. So I can do a book in like under three months. But I, and I, my best place to work is actually is my home in Montevideo, mm-hmm. because the telephone does not ring all the time. One of the reasons I work twelve to two thirty is everybody else is at lunch. Right. <laughs> and, but I do a lot in Uruguay mm-hmm. because I, I'm uh, relatively isolated. The phone isn't ringing. I have a fantastic, enormous, enormous house that I bought. You couldn't buy a dog, you know, kennel in Miami for the price. But prices are very low there. Yeah. So I, I can go there and really write a lot. I, can, I will do the bulk of a project usually there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Terrific. Um, boxers or briefs? I wear briefs because I was a dancer, and I expect things to be tight down there. Mm-hmm. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could have any superpower, which one would you choose? Oh, you know, I've been thinking about that, too. Two things. Can I, I'm going to have two things. Okay. One, if I had a superpower, the first thing would nobody would ever be unkind to an animal or a child. 
I hate that. I hate seeing that. And the other, my second one, and that bothers me a lot because we don't, we don't see it much in Miami because of the climate, but here more. I would not have anybody living on the street. Mm. Nobody. I can't bear that. You know, the other day I was walking along and there's this guy begging on the street and it was so cold I took my gloves off and gave him my gloves. I said, my God, you know, I could put my hands in my pockets. Mm. He had to hold his hands out. It was, you know, no, I hate having... I hate that. It's not as easy as just providing a place for them to live. I know that. And a lot of people, you know, and it isn't just that they're poor. They're, you know, their emotions are such they can't deal with things. But th those are the two things I would, if I could, would do away with entirely. That's terrific. And I've never gotten those answers before, so I love oh, it. Oh, good. Yes. Good. Yes. So thank it wouldn't you. be for me. I'm, oh. I only, the only thing I ever wanted to do in this world, I wanted to live in France and speak French, mm -hmm. which I did by the time I was 40. Oh my God. The rest has been dessert. I've gone so far beyond my plans for myself. It's amazing. I have. Nobody, I've never met anybody that can say that. Really? That I've gone true. far. I mean, I get up in the morning and I think, oh my God. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is, what's going on here? No, I never planned. Mm -hmm. You know, I never thought that in my 80s, I would be, I'm doing a fan dance in this new show, you know. I have my fans, and you can too. And I can get away with it. It's going to be great. I know. Pink high heels. You're going to love it. <laughs> you can never do wrong with pink high heels. I know. They'll carry you through anything. <laughs> they will. They will. Well, that's actually all my questions. Good. Well, um, thank you so much. Big pleasure talking.